I also want to welcome our online listening family. You're all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Like I said, since the beginning of this month, we've been talking about gratitude. We're talking about gratitude. And this morning, by the grace of God, I want to speak to us on the topic, the power of the blessing. The power of the blessing. There is a connection between gratitude and the power of the blessing. Wherever you find gratitude, the power of the blessing is available. The power of the blessing. One of the most powerful forces on earth is the force of the blessing. It is very powerful. When you honor God with your life, there is a blessing he puts on you that gives you advantage. There is a blessing God puts on you that gives you advantage. It causes you to rise up when circumstances are trying to push you down. It is the power of the blessing. It causes you to recover from illness when the expert said you won't. It is the power of the blessing. It causes you to win a battle when the enemy think is over with you. It is the power of the blessing. You will accomplish your dreams that looked impossible because of this power of the blessing. My brothers and my sisters, it wasn't just talent or your skill or your determination or your connection. There is a force behind you fighting your battles, opening doors you couldn't open, bringing the right people in your way. Those weren't just a good break. It's the power of the blessing. That is the blessing on your life. The blessing will cause you to prosper when others are struggling. It is called the power of the blessing that is on you. We're going somewhere. The blessing will bring promotion when you weren't next in line. It's called the power of the blessing. The blessing will cause people to be good to you that don't even like you. It's called the power of the blessing. I brought some of my sisters. When people who don't like you start running around to help you. The power of the blessing is on your life. When people who don't like you start running to help you. The power of the blessing 
is upon your life. When things start moving at a pace faster than your salary, when things start moving at a pace faster than your talent, when things start moving at a pace faster than your resources, the power of the blessing is at work. When God puts you in a position where those who despised you are now at your mercy, the power of the blessing is working. When God elevates you to a level where your enemy cannot recognize you, the power of the blessing is on your life. Proverb chapter 10, verse 22, and Ephesians 1, verse 3. Proverb chapter 10, verse 22. It says, The blessing of the Lord makes a person poor. How? I can't hear you, church. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich. God's blessing will make you rich. Your amen is too weak. (laughs) It is the blessing of God. The blessing of God doesn't make you manage. It makes you rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Ephesians 1 verse 3. All praise to God. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has what? Who has what church? Who has blessed us? With what? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. There is a benefit you must enjoy for being a Christian. You are not just a Christian for nothing. Amen, church. There is, it says, spiritual blessings in in heavenly realms. Brothers and my sisters, listen. In heavenly realms, the blessing is a supernatural flavor that attracts faithful. It's a supernatural flavor. It attracts faithful. Beloved, labor is good, but the power of the blessing is better. Labor is what? I'm not saying be lazy. Labor is good. But the power of the blessing is better. You cannot possibly work hard enough to achieve all that you need in life. It is not possible. With the blessing upon all that you do, struggle becomes a thing of the past. When we're talking about the blessing, we're talking about a divine lifting. The supernatural power that makes you visible, that makes you audible, and become invigorated, heightened in all that you do. The blessing is an endowment from God that empowers you for exploits. The blessing is a yeast that makes a man or woman to rise above the limitations of their destiny. It is a yeast, just like yeast, make bread to rise. It is a yeast that makes you rise above the limitations of your destiny. 
That you didn't come with a, from a family that has golden spoon in your mouth. There is a limitation on your destiny. See, the power of the blessing is a yeast that make you rise. Even though your beginning wasn't that good. It is a yeast that makes you sit at the top where you never expected to be. This power, it is heavier than the force of money. The power of the blessing is heavier than money. Is heavier than human connection. The difference between blessed people and unblessed people is like difference between night and day. Drastic. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. And we'll read First Corinthians and uh, First Chronicles chapter four, verse nine to ten. So Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-eight says, Then God did what? Bless them, and said, Do what? Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and do what? Govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, in the bird, in the sky. And all the animal that scurry along the ground. This is, then God bless them. That means, that means, my brothers and my sisters, anywhere you find yourself, you will make impact. He says, fill the earth, govern it, fruitful, multiply, rain in the sea, rain in the sky, take care of animal. Anywhere you find yourself, no matter anyone who tries to cover your glory, because there is a blessing on you, it will cause you to come out. In the name of Jesus, no matter the circumstances, no matter the difficulty, even when your family puts you in a pit, The blessing will make sure that you come out. Even when people lie against you in your office, hoping that you'll be fired, and the boss is about to believe it, the blessing will cause that thing to change. There is a force on you that is bigger than lies. There is a force on you that is bigger than people. There is a force on you that is bigger than human connection. It is so powerful. It's bigger than money. Money has limitation. This power has no limitation. Are you with me, church? Divine lifting, it makes you visible when people try to cover you. It makes you audible when people want to silence you. Genesis 9 verse 1. It says, Then, God blessed Noah and his sons and told them what? Be what? Be fruitful. The same thing he told who? Abraham. Be fruitful and multiply. You see these two words? Be fruitful, multiply. When this blessing is upon you, no matter where you find yourself in life, you will succeed. It might appear that things are rough. You see, you know this blessing, what it does? It causes you to prosper when not now go on. Yeah. 
It is it's be fruitful and multiply. When, when the system is against people, this one is against the system. Because it is God said, be fruitful and multiply. That is why Isaac could sow in the land of famine and reap hundredfold the same year. It is the power of the blessing. If there is anything you should pray about in your life, is that God, may the power of your blessing be upon me. It is bigger than God, help me. No. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. The power of the blessing. It says, there was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. Amen. Verse 10. Verse 10. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Oh! That you may, you would give me money. Oh, that you will bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do. And keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his requests. The blessing came upon him. When people try to push him down, the blessing caused him to rise again. Malachi chapter 3 verse 12. Malachi chapter 3 verse 12. It says, And all the nations will call you blessed. Hallelujah. People shall call you blessed. I said people shall call you blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. When people want to know what a, who, what a blessed person looks like. They will look at you. I said they will look at you. Then all nations will call you blessed. For your land will be such a delight. Says the Lord of heaven's armies. The blessing is a supernatural empowerment. It breaks family and ancestral limitations. It breaks ancestral limitations. That what your grandfather could not achieve. What your father could not achieve. What your mother could not achieve, that blessing breaks all of that and puts you at a different level on your own. Supernatural empowerment. It breaks family limitations. Genesis 49, verse 22 to 27, NLT. And then we'll read Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis 49, verse 22 to 27. It says, Joseph is the fall of a wild donkey. The fall of a wild donkey at a spring. One of the wild donkey on the ridge. Archers attack him savagely. They shot him and harassed him. Continue. But his bow remained taut, and his arms were what? Strengthened by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the shepherd, the rock of Israel. May the God of your father help you. 
May the Almighty bless you with the blessing of the heavens above and the blessings of the watery depth below and the blessings of the breast and the womb. Hallelujah. Continue. May my fatherly blessing on you surpass the blessing of my ancestors. There is a fatherly blessing that comes on you that surpass the blessings of your grandfather, that surpass the blessings of your mother, that surpass the limitations of your family. There is a blessing God puts on you. If people were dying before 70 in your family, when it comes to your turn, at 90, you are still going on vacation. It is a blessing. Listen, you need to understand this scripture. Because there's so many people here on earth. They are going through an ancestral problem. They are going through generational causes and problem. They don't understand why they are doing. They are trying so much and not now one. It says, may my father's heavenly blessing on you surpass the blessing of my ancestors reaching to the height of eternal hills. Next level. May this blessing rest on the head. You see what I'm saying? There is a blessing that will rest on your head. It is bigger than effort. It is bigger than labor. It opens doors for you when you are not present. The door will be open until you arrive. Why should people open door for you when you are not there? That's David. The door was open and he wasn't there. David did not send in a resume. And God selected him. I call it resume because the seven sons of Jesse, when they were parading, those days you don't write resume, you walk, they look at you. He wasn't there. Seven guys submitted a resume for a job. The one God selected did not submit a resume. Because there is a blessing upon his life that opens door for him when he's not available. Amen, children. Powerful. This, this is powerful, guys. So, 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 he said, let it rest on Joseph's head, who is a prince among his brothers. Glory be to God. 27. Okay, leave 27. I don't want to talk about Benjamin. Leave me. It breaks family ancestral limitations. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. It says, The Lord said to Abraham, Leave. Some say somebody, Leave. Leave your native country. God is not saying you should migrate. He just say leave. Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family. I want to concentrate on relatives and father's family. Because the, where God told him to go, the place I will show you, there's no way like that. There's no country called the place I will show you. So we're going to focus on relatives and father's family. And go to the land I will show you. Do you know the continent called I will show you? A 
Amen. Verse. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you and make you famous. Hallelujah. And you will be a blessing to others. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. And cause those who treat, who treat you with con- treat you with contempt. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. The blessing makes you a channel of blessing to others. Sometimes to become great and be a blessing. God will move you from your familiar zone. God will move you from your familiar zone. Amen, church. He will move you out. Move you out from the things you are used to. One big lesson from verse 3 of Genesis 12 is that you don't fight a blessed person. You partner with a blessed person. Tell your neighbor, don't fight with a blessed person. Partner with a blessed person. Oh, Shane, who, you guys, who are you guys telling? You guys need, you are part of the service, right? Don't fight with a blessed person. Partner with what? We live in a world where people too bad mind. You don't listen. Speaking against a blessed person will bring you down. Amen, church. It will bring you down. You risk being cursed. Is there now? I will bless those who bless you. And cost. So you risk being cost. When you fight a blessed person. When you mock a blessed person. You risk being cost. And that's why the Bible says that when David was dancing. He was dancing so well. And Michael cursed him. Michael treated him with contempt. After that conversation, she became barren and she never had a child for the rest of her life. You stand being cursed when you fight a blessed person. People don't know that. There are people who God has blessed that people are fighting. And they are attracting causes to their life and they are wondering why I go on. Can I tell you the honest truth? Where there is no where there is no blessing, labor is in vain. Where there is no blessing, labor is what? The watchman watches in vain. Except the Lord does what? Watch. Where there is no blessing, labor is in vain. I brought some of my sisters. I don't miss this. The blessing is spiritual. It cannot be seen, but it creates the sin. Did you get that, church? The blessing is spiritual. It cannot be seen. But it creates the sin. You can't see it. But it's creating scenes that is lifting you up. Amen, church. It is spiritual. It creates scenes. I'll give you an example. The Bible says the guy called Mordecai 
a promotion was due in his life. He's a man who carried blessing on his head. And then he has an enemy called Haman. And one day, Haman left his house. Meanwhile, Haman has built a gallow to kill a blessed man. On top of that strategy he formulated, he's, he left his house. He's going to the palace. He got to the entrance of the palace. He stopped. While he's there, the king is having a conversation inside the palace with some people who come to tell him, that, listen, there was a guy called Mordecai. He did something many years ago and nobody has remembered him. So on one hand, a man is going. He stopped. Then, the power of the blessing that is supernatural is activated on behalf of a blessed man. The king said, what has been done for Mordecai? He said, nothing. The next thing, he said, who is in the court? He said, hey man, hey man, come in. So he came for one agenda, but the power that is unseen created a scene. It created a scene. The power of the blessing is supernatural. It's not seen, but it creates seen. Come in! <sighs> what shall be done to the man the king delights to honor? He man said, ah. Jesus Christ, who would the king want to honor but me? Eh? He didn't know God created a sin. <laughs> so, the person the king delights to honor, let the king bring one of his best horses and let this person sit on it. And let one of the king noble princes be the conductor to navigate this horse. And let this person the king is going to honor sit on the horse. And let them declare, make way. This is how the king desires to honor this person. And this perfect scene God created, the very agenda he came to discuss. God's sin took over that. He couldn't even say anything. The very agenda he brought to discuss could not be discussed because the sin of God override the sin of man. The power of the blessing is supernatural. You don't see it. But it creates sins for you. It creates scenes that will favor you. That you don't know what is happening. But God is walking behind the scene. You just step into the scene. Mordecai just came. And I said, Mordecai, remember, how many of you know where Mordecai used to sit? Guess what? He sits at the gate. He sits at the gate. That's where he sat. And then they came to call him. And say, the king is calling you. Ah, what have I done? Come, king calling you. Even when God creates a sin for you, you will be like them that dream dreams. You will not even understand what is happening to you. You will not even understand where this money came from. You will not even understand, is it me? Or is my shadow? I just can imagine when the king said to Haman, 
everything you have suggested to that for Mordecai. Don't make sure nothing is removed. Is your recommendation? I approve it. Oh yeah. Come, Mordecai. Us. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Go down. Get it up. Get up. Oh yeah, sit down. Then, Emma, hold the rope. I pray in the name of Jesus. May God's blessing on your life humiliate your enemies. God's blessing on your life. That anyone who says you will not have peace, may God's blessing on your life bring them to total humiliation. So, so I just can imagine hey man, when Mordecai came. Because, because of shame, he couldn't look at Mordecai and say, sit down. Okay, let's go. This is what the king, this is how the, the, the way the king treats those he deserves to honor. Make way for Mordecai. Make way for Mordecai. Make way for Mordecai. Who is sitting on the horse? Mordecai, who is holding the rope? I pray for you this morning. Your enemy will never laugh at you. You will laugh at your enemies. It's, it's, it's supernatural. It's not seen, but it creates the perfect scene. For your promotion. It gives you a voice where you have no voice. Amen, church. It gives you a voice. The blessing is a supernatural seal of distinction. That stands you out in the crowd. Where others are queuing up without hope, the blessing of God will single you out. Where people are queuing up without hope, that power in the blessing singles you out. May the power of this blessing rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus. It's a supernatural force. That drives a man into the center of God's will. God's plan or destiny for his life. For her life. In the name of Jesus. Listen church. You will not miss the people you are supposed to meet. You hear what I'm saying? You will not miss the people you are supposed to meet. You will not meet the people you are meant to miss. I don't think you got it. The people you are supposed to meet, you will not miss them. The people you are not meant to meet, you will miss them. Because if you meet the wrong people, they bring problem into your life. I think I want us to digest this. This is more like introduction. I will continue on Thanksgiving. Because we're entering into the theme for September. The wonders of God. Amen, church. We're moving out of gratitude to experience the wonders of God. 
I would leave it here this morning. Amen, church. Amen, church. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For